Welcome to a virtual tour of Delaware Seashore State Park. I'm Lowell and I'm a seasonal naturalist here at Delaware Seashore and I'm gonna be your guide today. I'm a big fan of osprey. It is my favorite animal. It's a rather large bird of prey and bird of prey means that it seeks meat to eat and it's also migratory. So uh, depending on the age of bird, our osprey are gonna be leaving Delaware starting in the last week of August and running through the entire month of September and the first week of October with different birds leaving at different times. They're going on a southbound migration and we won't see osprey in Delaware until March or April of the following year when they return. So here we are, it's spring 2020 and the osprey have returned to Delaware Seashore State Park and other places in the first state. And we have a series of events and expectations for those birds that osprey fans are looking forward to. Adult birds have one series of expectations and the juvenile, the little young birds, we have some expected events for them as well. So when the osprey first come back, uh, last half of March, early April, they're gonna spend some time building or rebuilding a nest. A lot of the osprey pair uh, here in Delaware Seashore State Park are setting up housekeeping exactly where they were in 2019. In uh, early April, excuse me, late April, early May, uh, we can expect that at a successful nest, the female is going to produce three to four eggs. And she's going to brood those eggs until they hatch at the end of May or in early June. And by brooding, I mean that the female is actually sitting on the eggs and keeping them warm. Now, after the young hatch out in very late May or early June, that female is going to uh, provide direct care of those birds by staying at the nest until mid-July. So what I'm saying here is that the female is kind of stuck at the nest, if you will, uh, from the beginning of May until mid-July. Well, what's the male doing? Well, the male has duties too. Uh, osprey depend mainly on fish for their diet. And during this entire period from the beginning of May until mid-July, the male bird is responsible for bringing big, back fish to the nest. Now, after those juveniles hatch out, the male has to bring three to five pounds of fish back to the nest each and every day. Now, osprey catch fish by diving out of the sky and hitting the water talons first and grasping fish in the upper part of the water column. Then they take very quick and very powerful wing beats to get that fish out of the water and start flying back to the nest. Folks, this is a highly athletic and highly physical activity. It takes a lot of energy. So if you're observing nests between the beginning of May and mid-July, you might see the, os the male osprey resting for significant periods of time during the day. They might be perched right at the nest, or they might be perched on a tree or a pole within sight of the nest, resting, building up energy for that next catch of fish. Now, um, the juveniles, when they hatch out, sometimes we can see them at the nest. So from the beginning of June until mid-July, in addition to watching the mother who is at the nest all the time, we can be looking for juveniles. As time passes and the juveniles get bigger, our chances of seeing juveniles increase. Now, as a matter of fact, at the beginning of July, we can sometimes expect to see juveniles standing right at the edge of the nest, maybe even flapping their wings a couple of times. So flight school 
for young juveniles begins in mid-July. And this is a very interesting time to be observing osprey nests. When uh, those young osprey begin to take their flights, they are very short. And sometimes they land away from the nest and have to get up in the air, get airborne again and fly back. And sometimes they fly to and from the nest. Occasionally, we'll see an adult bird actually parallel, fly parallel to the juvenile in their first flights. The adult checking to see if the young aviator's doing all right. Now, as these birds begin to get more skillful in the beginning of August, we can see some real exciting stuff going on. Occasionally, not every day, but occasionally you will see large groups of osprey, multiple pairs of adults, different juveniles from different nests flying together in circles above us and circles of varying heights. In other words, some birds at one elevation, another group at the next elevation up and so on. And watching this large group of birds flying in circles Every now and then you'll see one from one of the upper circles swoop down and get form in with one of the lower circles and work their way back up. It's a very interesting sight to see and I hope you get to see one this summer. Now the last thing that the juveniles have to learn is to catch fish. And I've already said this is a very athletic activity, very difficult. And the juveniles learn this by first observing adults and then by trying it on their own. And it is a very difficult thing to learn. So you don't always get to see osprey catching fish, but when you do, uh, after the young, say like after August 1st, when they're learning to try to catch fish, they're taking their first dives and trying to grasp a fish in the water very often you'll see a bird diving down, hitting the water, trying to get back up, and they come up with no fish. So it's a trial and error effort, but the young osprey have to perfect this. Remember, they have to feed themselves. They have to perfect this in fairly short order because somewhere between five and eight weeks, after that bird is starting to learn to fly, the adults are going to start their southbound migration. Adult birds can start to migrate in very late August, and various adults will be leaving from that time through mid-September. Now I'm inferring that the adults are making this perilous long migration without junior and without cis, they're leaving without the young. The juveniles start this perilous journey on their own later than the adults. Juveniles are gonna start their migration in the last half of September, some leaving as late as the first week of October. So there's a whole series of events that we can look forward to with our Delaware Osprey uh, during the coming months. And I seriously hope that you're able to get out to uh, a Delaware State Park to enjoy this live and in person. If you come to Delaware Seashore State Park, I wanna tell you that my favorite place to watch Osprey is at Savage's Ditch Road. Savage's Ditch Road, you'll find Bayside off Delaware State Route 1 about a mile north of the Indian River Inlet Bridge. So drive back on Savage's Ditch Road to the Picnic Pavilion. And believe it or not, with a spotting scope or a good set of binoculars, you will be able to see a couple nests from under the Picnic Pavilion at Savage's Ditch Road. But it's much better to take a walk down to the shore of Rehoboth Bay. From there, you can see three or four nests, and I know that a couple of them are already active with, with a pair of osprey, three or four nests, and 
fairly easily be able to see what's going on with a good pair of binoculars. Plus, beyond that, further away, there might be three or four met nests that you can see from that bayside vantage point at Savage's Ditch Road. If you've got a spotting scope, you're going to be able to see a lot of those far away nests, but even with just binoculars, you can at least see whether an adult or two adults are at the nest. So a lot to look forward to, and I hope you're able to get out to a park and see this in person. But what if you're not able to come to a Delaware Seashore State Park? Well, I suggest that you do an internet search for Osprey Cam or Osprey Camera. That's O-S-P-R-E-Y space C-A-M. I think you're going to be able to find a pretty good set of options to watch a live stream video from an actual nest. And you'll be able to do this from now until uh, southbound migration begins in the fall. It's a wonderful substitute for seeing the real thing. Folks, thanks a lot for joining me today in Delaware Seashore State Park. And I have one final expectation that I'd like you to tell, I'd like to tell you about. I'm looking forward to visiting with you in person sometime soon at Delaware Seashore State Park. Thank you.